Hey, will you pray with me and for me real quick, please? Lord God, we are so thankful that we were able to gather here today. Thank you uh, for the ability to share about students and their amazing faith and how they lead us in this world. God, speak through me in these moments. In your holy name we pray. Amen. All right, once again, hey, I'm Todd Davids. I'm the middle school director here at this location. Um, you know, I, my wife and I and our kids have been going here for about 10 years, and I've been on staff for five we originally started coming here uh, for the Vibe service that met over in the Student Center, which has now become what you know as the Foundry service. Uh, this community has loved us through so many amazing things, good and bad, and we are just so thankful. I am not, um, I do not lack the knowledge that there is amazing pastors here, and the opportunity that I have to stand here and share with you is a unique one as a student minister, so thank you for allowing student ministry to be a part of this. Thank you for allowing me to be here on stage and to share with you. Um, so I have been in youth ministry for in some context for over 27 years, and I know you're all looking at me you're like, you're not old enough to be that, right? Uh, but I will come back and I'll share that with you here in a little bit. Uh, yes, I started very young, um, but here we are. Uh, I've been married for over 25 years to an amazing woman named Lindsay. Uh, we have two boys, Liam and Wyatt, uh, and you've seen them today. You know them. This is their community. They have served here. Liam was over singing here, our first song. Wyatt was playing bass. Uh, so thanks for allowing me to be a part of your community and my family to be a part of your community. Uh, we live on a small farm out south on 10 acres. There's goats and chickens and dogs and, and probably horses at some point. It's just chaos. It's absolute chaos. We are not farmers by any sense, but we pretend. Um, <laughs> and so it's been a great place to live. Um, finally, in this oversharing road trip of Tan, many of you all have been praying for me for about two and a half years. I, have, uh, I got diagnosed two and a half years ago with stage four colorectal cancer and have been battling through that. And uh, as of like the end of May, um, my blood test said zero, the CT scans said zero, and so I've had a summer without chemo and it's been glorious. So. So um, my cancer is known to be pesky and come back. I'll be going and getting scans again in September. So please keep us in your prayers. But thank you for all the food and all the prayers and just coming up and great hugs and high fives. Um, you know, going through cancer when you have like sixth graders coming up saying they're praying for you, ain't that bad, right? Like, um, so thanks to all of you that have been lifting us up in prayers. Um, so you guys ready to get into this? Um, there's a few things that you need to know, okay? Uh, I am unapologetically, unapologetically in love with student ministry and what it means uh, for our world and our community. So, like, you're going to hear me, like, ask students to be a part of it, and you're going to hear me ask leaders to be a part of it. Uh, my goal today, number two, my goal today is actually to find 30 new volunteers uh, to join us. Uh, last year, we had 130 um, and so, um, and you might hear me like exaggerate and inflate that because I believe in it so much. Uh, I encourage interaction of what we're going to do today. If you see something or hear something that makes you laugh, if you have something you want to clap for that encourages students, like do it. Like I've been leading middle schoolers for years, so like you're not going to interrupt me. It's going to be fine. Uh, and because I lead middle schoolers, uh, this message will probably be way shorter than you're used to. I normally preach 12 to 15 minutes on a Wednesday or a Sunday. So like a 35-minute Adam message like is a really big stretch for this guy. Um, so uh, we'll actually be getting out sooner than you think. But here's the deal. If we get out sooner, you can't go to kids' corn ask for your kids, right? That's where it comes back and like Todd gets in trouble because I let everybody out too soon. And so the accomplishes, I have students down here, they have signs, they're holding up like every five minutes where I'm at uh, to keep me on track. Okay, we ready? All right, let's do this. Okay. Uh, all right, so I have a huge heart for youth ministry, and the reason I have a huge heart for youth ministry is because it was the place that loved like goofy, overly energetic, like crazy Todd back in the day. There he is. 
with the big glasses. We called it a soccer mullet, uh, but now mullets are back in fashion, I guess. And even the guy that wore it, I'm still like, I don't know if we should be wearing mullets. Like, I'm just not really, not really sold on them yet. Um, my church that I grew up in didn't have like a massive youth facility, but it was like a really great space. And like we had a vol- or we had a part-time uh, staff that would come through, and like every two, three years they would rotate out, and they were great. But as I've grown, what I've realized, what was like the amazing thing that made our youth ministry and our church what it was, was the volunteers and the people that, like, that was their congregation. They weren't going anywhere. They weren't doing anything. They led, like, weekly programming and serve trips and snack suppers, and they empowered student leadership, and they were God's light and vision to us young people. So to the Goyers, to the Davidsons, the Christophers, the Waters, the Buses, I, I am who I am today because of what you all did uh, in my world that you showed up on a regular basis. So many of them are here today. Uh, if you know them or you see them, give them a big hug um, because I am who I am because of them. Over the last few years in student ministries, um, we've been trying to do this as well. We've been trying to bring people in and allow them to be a part of students' lives and families' lives so they can belong and they can choose and they can grow in their faith. At 19 years old, I was voluntold into leadership I was back from college where I didn't succeed real well, and I started serving uh, in student ministry. I went on my first serve trip as a volunteer uh, with middle school students at Des Moines, Iowa. And y'all, like my wife will tell you, I was never the same. I came back a different human being because of who those middle schoolers were. Their bravery and their courage to go serve and change the world, to build community, to love each other, and to do that fearlessly, and it changed me forever. So we're trying to do those things here uh, uh, at Church of the Resurrection, and it's happening. Over the last year, we had over 670 students come through and participate in one of our programs, whether it be Sunday school or Wednesday nights or confirmation. And this year, 160 of them were brand new. Y'all, that's insane. Most churches aren't 160 people. Like, we had 160 new people. Uh, Typically, a student attends about 11 times a year, but here's the kicker. If they attend like a memorable moment, like a fall retreat or a serve trip, their attendance doubles. It doubles. All right, so all this happened, not because of me, not because of our amazing staff, and we are really lucky for all those things, but because of volunteers that continue to show up for students and help them serve in the community and be a part of this place. We had over 130 volunteers serve weekly um, in in our student ministry, and they are the lifeblood of what happens. All right, so let's talk about scripture a little bit. Uh, I'm going to share this story from Nehemiah, and it's really powerful, and it it hit me in a way different this time I've read it than it's ever hit me before. So a little background story. Nehemiah um, was a cupbearer for like the the best known ruler at that point. And so what the cupbearer did is he would like, he would like taste the wine so that the ruler wouldn't get poisoned. But here's the deal. I mean, kind of a weird job, but here's the deal. Everybody loved this ruler. Nobody was trying to poison him at all. And so Nehemiah had, like, the cushiest job ever. He, like, got free wine and got to hang out in paradise. They talk over and over and over about it being paradise, paradise, paradise. And this is where Nehemiah lived and what his job was. But he was called to something else. He was called to help the Jewish people rebuild the temple wall for safety. So he left his cushy job. He asked for permission. He was granted it. He left his cushy job to go build this wall with the Jewish people. In Nehemiah 4, 6, it says this. We continued to build the wall. All of it was joined together, and it reached half of its intended height because the people were eager to work. Now, here's the thing. It's amazing that God, that Nehemiah was following what God asked him to do. But if you read through Nehemiah, the thing that really hit me this time as I read through it was like, they list all of these names of the people that were like building the wall. And it wasn't like engineers and it wasn't like large crane operators. It was like the blacksmiths and like the people that owned the shops. And it was like families working shoulder to shoulder to build this wall because they believed in it. And Nehemiah came to help them do this. So all I got a picture is like these normal everyday people like building this wall that they don't really know how to do, but they're motivated to do, shoulder to shoulder, side by side, working really hard together. And it goes and says that they 
uh, they got it to half its intended height because they were eager to work. Now, listen, friends, I've been over 50 mission trips, and there's times that you show up, and they show you what you're going to do, and you're like, I am not eager to do that. <laughs> but here we are with a bunch of students. We're going to do it. And so here's what happened this summer with our students. We, uh, uh, it's been a tradition that we go on serve trips all over the place. So our sixth graders stayed here in Kansas City. We let them sleep in their own beds because let's be honest, it's a little more comfortable six sixth graders uh, to be in their own bed. But we served all over town. It started off with this tour called the Dividing Lines Tour. It's an audio tour. You can find it and download it. And it tours you around Kansas City, and it tells you how Kansas City was formed, specifically by J.C. Nichols and a lot of the people that had money and how it began the segregation of Kansas City. What it does is it expands our sixth graders' worldview to understand, like, oh, this is my city, and it's not maybe exactly what I thought it was. And then we go serve in this community. We had six vans that went all over, 10 to 15 people per van, and with, with leaders in it and students, and they go all over, and they serve in soup kitchens. They serve in clothing closets. They go to homeless shelters. Uh, they serve, serve in rehab facilities. And they make a difference in this world. Look at the guns on those boys. The next one is seventh grade trip. And I'm going to unpack some of this later. Um, but the seventh grade trip went to Ozark. Uh, went down to Arkansas and worked with the Ozark Mountain Project. And they built like decks. And they uh, built wheelchair ramps. And yep, there you are. There was students, seventh and eighth grade students, using saws and drills and hammers and crowbars. And they were fantastic. Our high schoolers went to Chicago and served in the south side of Chicago, did urban ministry, ripping out carpet, doing, uh, uh, doing all kinds of landscape work, on and on and on. And then you see there our juniors and seniors went to Costa Rica this year and worked with partner organizations um, to help do concrete work. <laughs> they were doing concrete work, and it was brilliant. And so the last photo, if you'll hold there for a second, I want to go back to our seventh and eighth grade trip. This was my group. We served this amazing family. Um, this is couple's name is Leanna and Dan. And uh, Leanna and Dan, uh, Leanna was a high-level CPA, and she had a neurological disorder that kept her from doing her job well and then put her in a wheelchair. She had not left her home in a very long time. Now, we're in Arkansas in June. It was hot, like 104 to 108 degrees hot. Like, we'd have to, like, change our work schedules to make it happen, but every day, these students would work so hard. At lunch, we'd sit down with Leanna and Dan and eat our sandwiches and our fruit roll-ups and have conversations of joy and struggles and share faith, and not only were we building a ramp, but we were building community. In fact, Leanna, months, a month later, texted me this. If we can put that on the screen. I've never been a selfie taker, but now I want to document all of these firsts since getting my ramp. I still talk about the kid's joy at helping a complete stranger. I loved every morning. I could hear the excitement and happiness in their voices as they got out of the van. I always wanted to be out there when y'all arrived. I thought they would just be building a ramp down the stairs with a handrail. I had no idea it would be such a massive project. I could never repay the kindness and generosity your group showed me and my family. When I kept talking about the ramp, I would say that I wanted, uh, I wanted one to feel more independent, to even go out and just around my property. While you all were here, as, the day, as each day passed, I realized you all had given me much, much more than independence. You allowed me to dream again and to have hope. I have not realized how my life had come to this place. Y'all, seventh and eighth graders were inspiring this in a woman what a memorable moment. Y'all, this is what Nehemiah was trying to do. Use the position that God had put him in to bring dignity and hope and safety to the Jewish people again. To remind them that they are God's people meant for great things. Leanna is meant for more great things. And these students and leaders were able to provide the spark for her in hard times. As a community, we are called to that, age to age, generation to generation, memorable moments with people that care. These moments only happen with people that care. I'm going to share a video with here in a second. This is a story of a, of a gentleman named Scott and Alan and Liam. Scott shares that 20 years ago, he was like leading confirmation 
and he enjoyed that, and then like had taken a break, but then comes back. And when he comes back, he realizes that like he's leading on Sundays. Well, then one of his former confirmation students is leading on Wednesdays, and then they intersect, and this is what happens. My first entry was confirmation into serving with student ministry, and. And my wife had done this for my oldest daughter, and I knew I had a son coming along, and I thought, okay, I'm gonna need to do this. I'm gonna do this for my son. I'm probably gonna be his confirmation mentor in two or three years. Mm -hmm. And so maybe I ought to get some practice. So I kind of got hooked on confirmation. I did it for about 10 years. I had always heard about Scott. I didn't know who Scott was, but I had always heard about Scott. Oh. And I heard about Alan. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> on Sunday mornings, you gotta come sometime and meet Alan. I'll come on Sunday sometime. Um, <laughs> so I, I think we were like, the band was up there and I think I was standing next to you and I said, is that Scott? <laughs> And he yeah, said, yes, I think, I, think Scott. I remember I go, that. Oh my gosh, I am 99% <laughs> sure he was my confirmation leader and a metamorphosis leader as well. So you you absolutely made 99. <laughs> Alan shows up for confirmation. I show up to teach confirmation. <laughs> Liam is born. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Probably around the same time too. After, you know, I you led uh, confirmation, I signed up for confirmation band right after that and wow, I, I was in confirmation I know that. band for like three or four years. I grew up in this church, I went to youth group and I really think it made me kind of this man who I am today. The formation of my faith is mainly based on these two guys right here. To have a foundation of people that are willing to listen to you every day, or every week, probably most of the time twice a week, and have that comfortable place to just open up mm. and kind of ask all the questions you possibly can. And we may not know all the answers, but we're all, all gonna figure them out together, or we won't, and <laughs> we'll have a good laugh about it. Faith is a journey. It changes over a lifetime, mm -hmm. and, 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 um, and I think it should, that we're all kind of on this journey, journey together. You know, it was definitely a very rewarding experience watching mm -hmm. you all those four years, you know, grow into the man that you are today. So, it really was. <laughs> Thanks Thank for you. that. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Now, yeah, go ahead. You can applaud. That's amazing. Now, here's the deal. The, the Liam in that video is actually my Liam. I didn't even know this was happening, right? Like, they're like, hey, we got a video for you to share during the thing. I'm like, that's my kid. So thank you to Scott, to Alan, to Maggie, to all the adults that have loved Liam that have given him a place to struggle and to share struggles and to share joys and to grow in his faith as a dad. I am just so grateful that the things that happened for me years ago, other people pouring into me so that I love God and want to do likewise has now happened for my sons as well. Um, so there's one more video I wanna share with you. There, guys, there's just so many stories from this summer and from this year of God doing amazing things. So uh, Alan was part of confirmation and did that, but um, we have committed mentors that like show up and lead like every Wednesday and Sunday. We kind of think of Wednesday as like the easy place for students to enter in. Like we have a ton of fun and we kind of talk about life and we see where God intersects. And then Sundays are the place that we really get, like we dig into the Bible more. We call it our, our more discipleship path where students can uh, choose uh, to belong, uh, to choose their faith, to live out their faith and to grow. Uh, so this is a story about Ayala. Ayala is gonna be a junior this year. Um, and just take a look. What is your favorite part about being involved in student ministry? So I came at the beginning and I was just coming to Wednesday nights, um, just hanging with, with my friends, doing some worship, stuff like that. And then I went to a fall retreat and uh, met some more group leaders. I really enjoyed them, I really liked them, and I liked the conversations that we were having there because they were more serious. And then I decided to come to Sundays as well and I've been doing both since then. The leaders in Wednesday night small groups w initially just drew me in, made me feel really welcome and like I belonged there. Um, it was really easy to join in the conversations just of how they led them. And then when I went to fall retreat, I got um, invited to Sundays through uh, my fall retreat small group leaders. And now they're my Sunday school leaders and I love them so much and they um, helped me in my faith and they originally got, there, got me there so 
I'm really grateful for them and all that they've done for me. <laughs> the conversations we have on Sunday mornings are really important to me because not only are they building our faith and teaching us new things, it's also a really trusted environment. It's a smaller group, so you can have really meaningful conversations and share things about your personal life that maybe you don't with everyone else, and it's just a safe space for you to not be judged and to be cared for and cared about. Another thing that's really important to me is that my leaders, they always come support me. So I play volleyball and Jill, one of our leaders, comes to see my games and they all watch the Facebook live stream from home if they can't make it. And it just feels really nice to have that community behind me. Like, I know they're there even if they're not physically there. Like, I know they're thinking of me and I know that they want the update on if I won or not and stuff like that. And they'll. They just really take the time to learn about you, learn what you do, and then support you in those things. Yeah, give a round of applause. That's amazing. Listen, y'all, simple commitments by people that care matter. And we've talked about people showing up, you know, and leading Bible studies and Sunday school and those type of things. But just when you see students loving them, when they ask, like, hey, you need your lawn mode, even if you don't, like, loving them, right, um, in all those ways. When I started working here, it wasn't because I was, like, looking for a job. I was volunteering in student ministry. We were worshiping here and enjoyed it. Much like Nehemiah, like, I was comfy. Like, I had a photo business that I was running that was going well. I knew that I'd do student ministry at some point, but, like, volunteering was a great uh, place for me at the, po at the spot. But when the role came available and I was asked, they're like, Todd, like, why would you even be interested in doing this? Like, I said, the opportunity is huge. And not like for me, like not for my notoriety or title or office or any of that type of things. The opportunity for what God is and was and is going to do through students here is huge. Imagine thousands of students that love Jesus and want to go change the world. Imagine, and, it, and see now, y'all, that it is happening. You see this in the videos. It's happening now, and we are grateful to be a part of it. Somebody was asking me earlier, like, um, hey, you've been here five years. Most youth leaders only last five years. So what's next? I said, y'all, for the first time since I've been here, I feel like that snowball, like, that we've been pushing so hard is getting there. The community is beautiful. And yeah, people are showing up to serve students, but they're realizing in this really large church that like, oh, this is the community that loves me as a leader, that cares for me as well. And then that trickles down and loves students. It can happen here. It is happening now. We get a chance to be a part of students and families having a place to belong, choosing to follow Jesus, growing into deeply committed Christians, and living it out with confidence in the world. All right, so here it is, friends. You knew the ask was coming. I told you up front. You've heard it the whole time. Memorable moments can only happen with people that care. What did we see earlier? That if a student shows up for a memorable moment, they come, they start attending twice as much. Those people are you. You don't have to know how to do youth ministry. You don't have to be a Bible scholar. We are looking for people that love Jesus and like students. We don't always love students. And not the opposite. You can't love students and like Jesus. Love Jesus and like students. Will you join us? If you remember, we had 130 volunteers last year. We're trying to get to 180 this year because growth is happening. The students are amazing. They keep inviting their friends. Even when we say stop, no, we never say stop. They keep inviting their friends that are seeking moments that matter with people that care. We estimate about 800 students will be participating in Leewood this year. We're talking about Leewood, y'all. We have six locations. So that becomes exponential beyond that. And here's the thing. They don't all like me. I know, what? I understand I can be a little loud sometimes. I can be a little intimidating. Real relationships happen when you connect with people that, like, are similar to you. If I walk up to an introvert, I'm like, Whoa! they're a little terrified. They don't really want to be a part of that anymore. It happens.
happens. I've seen that fear on students' faces. So now I walk to one of my lovely volunteers that is more kind and gracious and not as annoying as I am. I'm like, hey, will you go talk to that kid? It happens. It matters. They need people that are here once a month smiling and knowing their names while serving in the cafe or greeting. They need people that write letters and mail them to them. Weird, right? Like mail? Like it actually is that box that sits outside your house, shows up. They need people that commit to every week in a mentor role, and you've heard some of that. They need people that go on retreats and serve trips to help expand their worldview. Even more, they need people that will invite them to usher when they're here. They need people to invite them to greet in big church. They need people to give them high fives that smile at them. They need people that tip them well when they're your server at your restaurant. Like, take care of your servers and your students. Like, even if they're terrible, give them an extra dollar. It's okay. There are all different skills and time commitments to living and loving students. We will train you and we will support you. All right, so our theme this year is Hello Hope. Uh, we have a theme every year for student ministry. I love this theme. I can't wait to wear a T-shirt that has it. <laughs> uh, but we want students to have hope. Because you know what happens when people have hope? Anxiety is easier to handle when we have hope. We do better in school at work when we have hope. We do better with our relationships with our friends and our families, even if they're falling apart when we have hope. Be a blessing for every young person to encounter and let them have hope. In the Corinthians here, it says, in 3.12, it says, so since we have such a hope, we act with great confidence. As I've coached students through years, you know the ones that do well, the ones that have confidence and hope. As I've seen students come in and they want to be in a leadership role, then you know the ones that can do that? Like little Ellie up here singing her heart out. She has confidence and hope. That happens when people love on them and care for them and show up for them. Hello, hope. Give me some of that. I want some more of that. All right, finally. People said two things to me over the last few years. Todd, I don't know how you lead middle schoolers all the time, and they always do this. God bless you. <laughs> I know I'm one of the weird wire ones that have been in youth ministry, specifically in middle school, for over two decades. <laughs> God bless you. Um, the other thing that people say to me all the time is, you are so positive about your cancer journey. Let me tell you this, friends. Neither of these are easy. Middle school ministry, you've been with people that have gone through cancer or other health journeys. Neither of them are, are easy. But they're easier with moments that matter and people that care. Friends, can we be that? Can we do that? Can we show up and move each other to moments that matter, that we remember, and that we carry on with people that care? Let's pray. Lord God, we are um, we're so grateful for an organization that loves students and loves God and that wants to make a difference in both ways. God, we've got this little thing inside of us. We've known somebody that has moved us, that has shown up for us, that has cared for us, that has made us the people that we are today. Lord, help us be vulnerable. Help us be brave. Help us break through to be that for the next generation. Allow them to lead us, to change us, to be your love and light in the world. And all the people said, amen.